All right, we're going to be reviewing Season of Opulence. Now, Season of Opulence is pretty sick tits. It's a lot better than um, the previous stuff. Oh, yeah, a new setup, by the way. I got a webcam and a mic. whoop de fucking do It's certainly better than this shit, that's for sure. Um, and the s s part in my mic really sounds retarded, and I think that's just because of how I pronounce that. It's been that way of every single mic I have. Maybe it's just a, a mic probably maybe like a pop filter? Pop, pop, pop. I, I, I don't know. Uh, anyway, yeah, so Season of Opulence, I have a little checklist here to go over on my thoughts. Um, obviously, we don't have everything yet. So I'm having a bit of lighting coming out for this side. So um, we have, we still have the Lumina Quest next week. We just had Heroic Mud come out today, uh, which I believe is going to be the Rose Hand Cannon. Uh, and then we have on July 9th, Tribute Hall of Moments of Triumph, which I have fucking no clue what that's going to be. I know what Moments of Triumph is. Um, and then we have July 30th. Sources of Heroes, and then we also have the Bad Juju, which doesn't list on here, but we do know there's a Catalyst in a database. Um, so there's that. Uh, and so there's three things I'm going to talk about, um, and that's going to be Menagerie with new weapons and gear. Um, so it's kind of four things, but uh, the Chalice of Opulence and the new raid. Uh, I'm not going to be talking about Heroic Mode or the Truth Quest or anything like that. I'm just going to talk about the base things in this uh, DLC here. And... Um, yeah, let's go and go over it. Uh, we're going to start off with Menagerie of the new weapons and gear. Of course, Menagerie is a new six-player match-made activity that is totally sick tits. I absolutely love it. Uh, it's like Mario Party mix of Destiny, which is fucking amazing. Uh, and it's fucking cool as shit. Now, if you want to see some gameplay of it, just go and look it up. I mean, there's tons of different stuff. There's uh, shit to do with, like, crystals, and they have all the Hydra Beams to shoot them, and there's bosses, and they go around and run these fucking... Go around and run at these, like, arc... Like, green beams and then slime them into shit and then there's one where you go around you have to stay on these plates while you're having a shitload of like hive you know attacking you and it's just it's very very awesome uh and i'd recommend checking it out or just fucking playing it you know it's it's cool as hell uh and i do think just starting this off right off the bat i mean this is worth it um worth the price to go in with all the different amount of content there is to even the previous stuff which is still kind of fun um and yeah, so Menagerie of New Weapons and Gear, like I said, Menagerie is a fantastic uh, new activity. It is, in my opinion, the best match-made activity they've ever come up with. It is single-handedly the best. It is so much fun. There's so much variety with the encounters. Every encounter feels different than the last. Um, and depending on your team, uh, you can go, well, of course you can go faster and then slower, but you can't fail the normal mode at least, which is... Awesome. Now the heroic mode, just to mention, is not match made, uh, which kind of fucking sucks. But uh, at the same time, there's going to be some complete fucking dipshits. Uh, I mean, if you just look at the reckoning alone, uh, there's going to be some fucking dumb fucks going in there. So I'm glad there isn't a match made heroic mode. Um, and uh, yeah, I feel like to be kind of like a waste of resources on Mudgy's part to implement something like that that probably no one's going to use. Um, but Anyway, yeah, we have, of course, the new weapons and gear, which is really awesome. That also flows in with the Chalice of Opulence. Um, and yeah, the Menagerie is just absolutely fantastic. Like I said, so much variety in encounters and stuff like that. And like I said, it's the best activity they've ever created for matchmaking, which is a big thing because they've made so many different matchmaking activities. And by the way, this is also going to include the Horde modes, like Archon's Forge, Court of Orcs. I did not mention that those, they're kind of matchmade. Uh, but we're going to include those two with this. This is the best they've ever made, in my opinion. New weapons of gear, of course. Um, obviously, some of them coming from the Menagerie. Some that kind of do, like the Truth Quest. Uh, we have the Lumina next week. Uh, we have the new armor pieces, which is a great one for each class, I believe. Uh, the, the Hunter's got fucked, though. Hunt, the Hunter one is so bad. Like, I, it's like a Snoke Bomb when you melee someone. and You could just you just throw it at range. Like, what the fuck? Why? I don't know. It's so stupid. Um, anyway, yeah. So... There's that section. Next, we're going to be talking about the Chalice of Opulence. It's a new... Uh, if you played the Dawning of this year and you saw, like, the cookbook, um, it's kind of like that. It's a new uh, inventory item that's in your Pursuits tab, which, by the way, the Pursuits tab fucking sucks now. They've changed it into the Director, which is really ugly and just an awful system. Change it back, please. Uh, it is a new little item inside of your Pursuits tab um, that you could press triangle on or right-click if you're on PC. Um... And it goes into it, and it's a huge tree of stuff. So you have, uh, like, a thing on the top, a thing on the left, a thing on the bottom, and you have three different sections of three upgrades. 
um, for each kind of thing. So we have, well, the first one on top, we have, that's the base rune slot. That's where you're going to put your, uh, your, your base kind of weapon stuff. So hand cannons, sidearms. Oh, is there a sidearm? I don't fucking know. Like hand cannons, auto rifles, um, armor stuff, all of that. Your second slot is going to be more specific. So that's going to be, or if you want to roll recovery, uh, mobility, or resilience in your armor piece, or go with, which doesn't seem to work out too well, high rounds per minute and stuff like that, because it doesn't work out too well, because um, if I want to go Rune of Ambition on the top, which is power weapons, and then on the left, do, because there is no, like, you can't specify your power weapon, which kind of sucks, uh, and then you want to go on the left, which is like any red rune, that's guarantee you to give you um, the new Menagerie Machine Gun. So, <sighs> Even if you have high round per minute on red runes or whatever. Is there red runes of high round per minute? I don't know. You get my point though. And then the right rune, which is Masterworks. That's going over your Masterworks stuff. This is mirrored. Um, forgot about that. Um, my right. So over here, I guess, um, where your uh, Masterwork thing is. And that way you could specify what if you want stability, reload, all of that. Or on armor, if you want void, solar, and arc resistance, which is really fucking awesome being able to this is a huge deal by the way being able to specify what gear you want is fantastic especially with the power and efficiency upgrades which is on the bottom um part of the the, uh, the item and the power and efficiency upgrades were the first two give you a additional powerful gear activity so or powerful gear reward so essentially you can get three per week on each character for menagerie which is huge um and that could potentially be whatever you want. So are you low as shit on your class item? Like, is that below everything else? Well, you can go for that for your powerful gear stuff. Uh, or your helmet. Or your, your hand cannon. There is no RNG with this anymore. Unless if you are selecting just straight up hand cannon, right? There's a, I believe there's a chance for you to get the, um, the new one, the uh, Ostringer. But then there's also some other stuff. Unless if you do that. It eliminates RNG. You get what you want. The only RNG there is is the perks. You get the handkin that you want. Obviously, you still have the chase for the goblin and stuff like that with the perks. But in terms of getting the weapon, that eliminates RNG from there, which is fantastic. And I love that. They need to do that moving forward. It's such a fantastic system that really improves the quality of life with this activity and makes it even more better. If the, mono if the chalice was not here straight up, menagerie would suck. Menagerie... And the chalice go hand in hand to make a awesome system um, that is so awesome. Ugh, just said that. Uh, yeah, so obviously we have power and efficiency. We have rune. Um, shit, what is it called again? I don't fucking know. There's like a tree where you basically, I have all them upgraded, but where you can get, uh, where it allows you to get red, um, green, and blue runes. Um, so those are new types. You start off doing purple runes, but then you can upgrade that to get new types of runes, which allows you to get more items and stuff like that, uh, which is very, very cool. That whole system is just fantastic. I cannot express how great that edition is. This is the best edition. Um, obviously, that goes hand in hand with Menagerie there as well. Um, but it's just awesome. And a brand new armor set for each um, each of them. Also, I forgot to mention Eververse stuff. They have um, year one Ingrams, so you earn those pretty often too. And that could grant you, it gives you tons of different year one stuff. It's not all year one stuff, but it gives you tons of like different classic year one stuff that they had. Um, and it does also give you a new armor set, um, which is the opulent armor set. I have the full thing on my Hunter. That looks just badass as hell. Um, but there's also a brand new armor set you can get there as well, which is cool. And also you have the intrepid stuff, which looks like garbage too, from the regular Eververse, not the Ingrams. Uh, and they have a whole new Eververse system, which I'm not exactly the biggest fan of. I prefer the previous one, but, um, there is more direct buy items at the cost of having... Um, less earnable ways to get stuff because you can't, you really can't earn all of that besides Bright Dust. You can't earn it in the New Ingrams, which kind of sucks. Um, next one is the Crown of Sorrows Raid. Um, the raid is awesome. It's on the lower tier for me. It's um, it's better than Scourge. I think Scourge is the worst one for me, even though all of the raids are great in Destiny. I, I, I think all of them are some of the best content in Destiny. Even Scourge of the Past, which I consider to be the worst raid. Um, for me, at least. I've played every raid besides the Raid Warriors. So I've never played Spire Stars and Neither Worlds. Or Neither Worlds, Spire Stars, for kind of chronological order. Uh, so I've never played those. So uh, in terms of where this would fit on my list, it would be number seven. Uh, everything else would be above it. Uh, I might make a 
top eight raid videos. I, I don't know. Uh, or rate top eight raid video. My bad. They're not videos. Um, and uh, yeah, so the raid is great um, for the most part. I just think the second encounter sucks. I think the second encounter is the worst raid encounter they've ever designed, at least from what I've played. It's really, really bad. And I'm not going to spoil it. But it's a just horrible encounter, like design-wise. It's really boring, and I don't consider it to be a full-on encounter. Um, and it just sucks, you know? But then I think the, the biggest encounter in the best encounter is Galran Phase 2. Phase 2 has really, really grown on me. Um, it is a awesome encounter. Uh, I did make a kill reaction, too, if you want to check that out. I do I have one of those um, up on my channel right now. And uh, it's got a decent amount of views for my channel size. Um, yeah, it's, it's really fucking awesome. Uh, and phase two is just so chaotic. Uh, your mic is just lit up as fuck. Your party is just lit up, man. It is so fucking lit up. Uh, so many people trying to talk about stuff. It is a clusterfuck. Uh, and I love it. It's great. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much going to cover it. I mean, there's, there's, uh, there's tons of new stuff to do. Uh, and com combine that with the, the Season of Drifter and Season of the Forge stuff, uh, and also the Forsaken stuff, and all the Year 1 stuff. There's just tons of stuff to do in this game, um, and obviously this just adds on to it. And as of now, it is really easy to get the 750. I was able to do it in two uh, weeks on my Hunter. Um, yeah, yeah, two two weeks, two and a half weeks, almost, almost to the next week we reset. On my Hunter, which I started off at 690 because I had to do the Power Search quest. Um, so I wasn't even 700 because I switched from PC to PS4. Um, but that's, I don't know. Yeah, that, that's what I did. Uh, so, yeah. Overall, I think it's a really, really good DLC. I would give it probably about an 8. Um, obviously, this is taking into account that it's not supposed to be a big DLC like King's Fall. And, um, I'm sorry, not King's Fall. Uh, taking King, you know, Rise of Iron, all that. It's not a big DLC or like Shadowkeep coming up uh it's not a big dlc it's obviously a small one and is easily the best annual pass uh expansion if you want to consider it that they made easily it is the best um far and away it beats the shit out of everything else they've done at least the other two stuff and uh yeah it's gonna be it i uh, hope you guys enjoyed this man it's uh eh, whew, it's a great activity man it's, it's not a great activity it's a great dlc uh anyway yeah peace